Alright you guys, so uh, in today's video I think I'm going to do kind of a final wrap up of the, uh, the rotating assembly machine work. Um, I've gotten all the components I need to do the rotating assembly balance. There is going to be a video later of, you know, the short block assembly and, you know, long block assembly. As far as the, you know, kind of little bit of boring uh, machine work and stuff, this is probably going to be the last video. Okay, so all the stuff I have here is the parts and stuff you need to do a uh, rotating assembly balance. Pretty much essentially what it is, is anything that is spinning with the crankshaft, including rod bearings, rods, pistons, flywheel bolts, flywheel, cam sprocket, that's what the timing uh, belt goes off of, and then the crank pulley. As well as the woodruff key for the crank and the crank bolt as well as the crank itself. So that's a lot of stuff. It's pretty much essentially the whole short block minus, you know, the, the crank crank bearings and um, gaskets and stuff like that. I mentioned this in one of the other videos. Um, if you're building a V8 or something that doesn't rev very high, like 5,500 RPMs, uh, you don't really need to do all this balancing nonsense. Uh, the stuff that you buy is gonna be balanced enough for that RPM. But this engine is going to be revving to 8,000 probably, maybe a little bit more than that. It's definitely capable of more than that. But uh, so I wanted to get the pistons and everything balanced correctly. So you've seen in the other video, I did the piston balancing. I did the ring gap. And then I was going to move on to do the um, connecting rod balancing. I believe I showed you guys this jig that I made for doing the connecting rod balancing. So this isn't a bad thing at all, but it's bad for, I guess, demonstration purposes. So I made this jig to do connecting rod balancing, but um, I bought these connecting rods from Brian Crowler. Uh, Brian Crowler's been nice enough to sponsor the build. So I got these connecting rods from them. They're very, like, very good quality connecting rods. Turns out that um, these are already, like, really balanced. So uh, a lot of this stuff, like your pistons and stuff they're balanced but it's within two grams which is the industry standard these ones when i weighed them out uh they were all within a quarter of a gram which is even more than i was trying to get the pistons to so with the pistons my goal was to get within half a gram of each other because if you go anything less than half a gram you don't really see the benefits of that you know weight difference as far as engine smoothness goes now, I didn't touch anything with these connecting rods, and they were a quarter of a gram within each other's weights. So, in this uh, packaging with the connecting rods, you get this little um, packet with some paperwork. Uh, it comes with this, which kind of just, it's like the part number, engine, tells you all the specs about the, uh, the connecting rods. And then you also get... Um, instructions that have at the bottom your total weight and stuff of each end and stuff like that um and the uh je pistons had a similar thing um so it has like a total weight of that um there's like pin weight on here as well the target weight these seems like they actually weighed everything because uh these are all the same weight um uh, to the you know Five four six, uh, but you know it was only changed after this number, so it was like 0.25 to 0 0.00. But they were all the same weight, and that's something to be said for Brian Crowler. Um, the fact that they can sell a connecting rod for a reasonable price. I think retail on these is like 450, or you can find them for 450 around. So for them to be able to provide that quality and precision of a uh, part for you for that price. Uh, I think is unmatched. Now I can't speak for other brands and stuff like that and how far they are, but the only thing I have experience with is with the JE Pistons, which were within two two grams of each other, but I still had to do the work of balancing it further. These ones I didn't even have to touch. So that being said, uh, since I don't have to do anything to them, I'm just going to give you just a quick demonstration of what you would do uh, if your connecting rods did need balancing. Okay, so this jig right here um, it's used to measure the, you know, each end of the connecting rod separately so that you can uh, ha figure out how heavy the connecting rod is up here and down here as well. So these jigs can be purchased. They're all aluminum real fancy and stuff for like 200 to 300 dollars. 
So I made this one. It's uh, pretty simple. It's just a couple pieces of wood bearing some flat aluminum and some, you know, bolts, washers, and nuts and stuff. And then this scale. If you're going to do this, I would recommend getting a better scale than this. This is just like a $10 scale I bought on Amazon. But it worked well for the pistons. Um, probably need something better than the connecting rods. Now, if I were to do this uh, again, I think instead of doing this kind of L bracket setup that sits on the scale, I would um, do like a an L bracket that comes up and then has something hanging like this, um, same kind of design as this, but sitting on the scale. I think that would give you more accurate readings. So basically, all you do is you turn the scale on and you put this weight on there. You zero it out, and then you can insert this round part into the big part. And then you kind of just set it up and make sure it's even. And then you get 384.12. Uh, so that's how heavy the back end is. Then you just switch this piece of wood onto this side, flip it, and then you got to re-tear it because it's a different weight now. And then you can take this. Set it up, make sure everything's square. 161.60. And uh, so you record those numbers. And then, just like with the pistons, uh, you find the heaviest one and the lightest one. And um, you want all the ends to, you know, be within half a gram of each other. And if the back end needs to be done, uh, you can remove it from right here is the best spot. If the top needs to be done, the best place to remove it is just radius this top piece. Um, I've also seen some people take uh, meat off the sides right here to do it, but uh, it's all kind of up to you, all preference. Uh, you don't want to go too crazy with removing material from connecting rods because it is a very high strain component. Even though I'm not doing the connecting rod balancing, I kind of wanted to get, just give you guys an idea of how it's done to make this kind of engine building series more rounded. I don't really want to leave any details out. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick out all the uh, parts that I need and for the... Uh. So now I'm going to go ahead and lay out all the rotating assembly components just so I can get a good picture of it and uh, kind of show you guys um, all the parts that are going into this engine. Okay, so here's all the uh, rotating assembly components, um, just one of each of course. So I'm just going to kind of go through all the stuff and tell you what it is, um, if it's upgraded or not, and then uh, I have some stuff to compare to stock. So what this is right here is the crankshaft. Now uh, this is a forged and nitrided crankshaft. So um, nitriding is kind of like a hardening process. This is a forged crankshaft um, and it's nitrided. So that's how you can tell is from this like blue color on the uh, counterweights it's a oem subaru part so these crankshafts um they fit in all the late model um ej25s and stuff but they came in i believe is the i don't know 08 to 14 stis i believe some sort of sti model came with the forged and nitrated crankshaft uh, but they fit in all ej25 models so for comparison um this is a stock crankshaft right here you can see the counterweights are just the same color as everything else. Um, that's, I guess, the only visual difference. But uh, this isn't forged. This is forged. This is probably good for... I bet you could take it to the, the realm of 400 and not have any problems with it. Um, this crankshaft uh, doesn't really have a known limit yet. But I, I've seen a bunch of people have it 800 horsepower, 1000 horsepower. Usually they're doing like... Um, stroker kits and stuff like that but this uh, crankshaft is good for 800 definitely so then we got crankshaft bolt nothing special about that wood drift key nothing special about that this is the uh, cam or the crank sprocket that the timing belt rides on nothing special about that it's fact all that's factory Subaru stuff so and then like I showed you before these are the Brian Crowler um, forged connecting rods uh, these are an H-beam design compared to, this is a factory Subaru connecting rod. Uh, this one's a little bit rusty, but uh, this is just a kind of a cast steel or whatever it's made out of connecting rod. This is an H-beam design, which is a lot more stronger. These connecting rods are good to 200 horsepower per cylinder. So for my engine, that would be 400 horse, or I mean 800 horsepower, sorry. And it has ARP 2000 connecting rod bolts in them. Um, it's got kind of a 
interesting finish. It's like a shot peen finish, but like finer. But yeah, like I said before, everything on these connecting rods is very, very well made. Like you can barely even see the seam. So well machined, uh, very consistent. So just so you guys know, all these sponsors, I reached out to them. So uh, all these products I wanted, and that's why I reached out to, to get sponsorships from those people. I didn't kind of do a blanket sponsorship request. It was like, I want these connecting rods. So I applied for a sponsorship with Brian Crowler. I wanted uh, all these certain products from Grimspeed. They make a lot of products uh, for my car, just kind of overall broad range of performance products, nothing in particular. But uh, like Brian Crowler's mostly um, engine related stuff. Uh, Grimspeed has a lot of bolt on stuff like intercoolers and stuff like that. So everything I wanted, I applied for those sponsorships. So these products I'm telling you about, I'm not just telling you that because they gave me free stuff or whatever. It's because I like it and I picked this for my car. So now moving on past the connecting rods, we have these JE forged pistons. Uh, and of course there's the pins as well. Uh, JE pro seal rings. So um, that's kind of, I guess the main bits of the rotating assembly. Uh, everything's forged. Um, I don't know if these pistons are good too, but I know that the weak point on my engine is going to be my block because I don't have closed deck. It's just semi-closed deck. Uh, but the engine shop told me it should be good for 550 in that range. So that's pretty much all I want for this street car at this point. So now for uh, the rod bearings, I did a lot of research on who makes good rod bearings. Um, and I got these King bearings right here. They're King Racing uh, connecting rod bearings. Uh, that's the part number right there. XPG standard. Max black so these have like a coating on them and stuff but uh the connecting rod bearings I ordered are uh, 10,000 or I don't know 0 0.0001 inches higher tolerance higher clearance than factory um, and that's just you know it'll help a little bit with uh, the heavy loads that are hitting the crankshaft and the rod bearings will help cushion that with a little bit more oil in between everything but from what from the research I did, these uh, king bearings are the best option uh, from what I've I've seen. Uh, there's also ACL and other stuff, but these are um, review wise the most consistent out of all of them as far as thicknesses go and clearances go. And then we have this Grim Speed lightweight crank pulley. I don't have an example of a stock crank pulley to show you, but I also don't know how much a stock crank pulley weighs. But uh, this is like the harmonic balancer kind of. Uh, these engines are kind of naturally balanced because of the layout of the piston design so you don't need that uh harmonic balancer like rubber isolator to actually harmonic or to dampen the harmonics of the rotating assembly so you can get away with just having a metal crank pulley and that allows you to run a, a lot lighter of a pulley i'm assuming this is made out of aluminum um uh, it's not crazy light but i think it's maybe like eight pounds or something so uh all this lightweight stuff that i'm getting everything is lighter than factory um but all this lightweight stuff if you don't know it helps the uh rpms climb faster so you can rev the engine a lot quicker it's like kind of a snap your engine so now i have arp uh flywheel bolts that's just uh standard for any engine build no matter what uh, make and model you got arp uh fasteners are the strongest you can go with and then we got this uh, ACT lightweight flywheel. Uh, this flywheel weighs 13 pounds. I don't know what a factory flywheel weighs, but same idea as the crank pulley. Um, lightweight, helps it rev quicker. You kind of have to be careful of uh, the products you should decide to match up because if you sometimes if you run a different weight, lightweight flywheel with a lightweight harmonic balancer, uh, you'll get like a knock code because it's not balancing out the way it should. But uh, I've already done the research, and uh, this weight flywheel goes with this weight crank pulley well. So I shouldn't have any issues with any codes or anything throwing from the uh, these two being used together. So with all that stuff, I can now take um, everything to the machine shop and get the crankshaft balanced to the weights of all the other um, stuff that I have here. So yeah, I'd like to take this time to just thank all the viewers who've been supporting this uh, this build. Uh, it's been hard going from uh, kind of an American car um, audience to doing a Japanese car. But uh, there's been some of you that have been sticking by. 
some of you are new and I appreciate you subscribing and stuff. But yeah, we're getting pretty close to having this uh, engine start assembling. Uh, I'm making this video on Tuesday. This Friday, I'm going to Brian Crowder to pick up the rest of the uh, valve train components. And then I'm going to take the rotating assembly and the heads with all the new parts to the machine shop and have them do the head work and the rotating assembly balancing job. And then once I bring that back, I gotta buy a few more parts, uh, mainly gaskets, head studs, um, oil pumps, and you know, a couple little other things. Um, and then I'll be able to start assembling the short block and long block. So keep an eye out for those videos coming up soon. They'll be a little bit more um, entertaining than these heavily detailed machining videos. So. Thank you again for the people who watch these videos. If you aren't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. That'd mean a lot to me. And uh, stay tuned for the rest of the engine building videos. And stay tuned for the videos that are soon to come once this car is done. I'm going to be doing a lot of racing and, you know, canyon runs and all sorts of fun stuff. So stay tuned for that. As always, thanks for watching. And I will see you on the next video.